Here we have a mainspring and this is out of an 8 day movement and as you can see it has broken and it has broken probably after the first three feet of the spring so there's nothing really that can be salvaged on this because it's broken pretty far into the spring and, it, and we're going to need to replace it. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we need to measure the width of the spring because they do come in different widths like here, this one here I've already measured with the ruler and it is three quarters of an inch as we can see there it's three quarters of an inch and springs do come in different widths here's one that's half an inch and here's another one that's between a half inch and our three quarter spring we're going to need to look for a main spring that's three quarters, at least three quarters of an inch uh, we can't really vary from that because there's not a whole lot you can do about thickness of a I mean, excuse me, the width of the mainspring because there's only so much room in the clock movement and whatever the uh, width is of your spring, that's what you're going to have to stick with. Uh, let's look at some information. And the first thing we're going to look at are the measurements of our spring. Our spring, its thickness, which I've measured using a caliper like this one, comes out to be 16 and a half thousandths of an inch and its length is 96 inches un uncoiled so you'll have to uncoil it and, and uh, measure the, the length but this one comes out to 96 now I looked through several supply catalogs to see what kind of a mainspring we could do use to replace this one and I did not find an exact match but I did find three other uh, mainsprings that could be possible matches and that's what we're going to discuss because many times you'll look and you won't be able to find through some of the, some of the clock supply houses the exact same spring so what do you do? You have to know what to deal with in terms of length, width, and thickness in order to make a comparable spring that will work for your movement. I found one here is a thickness of 16 thousandths and is 78 inches long well, 16,000 sounds like it's pretty close, but the length of 78 inches is a bit too short because as a general rule, this is the general rule that you should follow, when reducing the length, do not reduce more than 10% from the original length. So if you have a 100 inch mainspring, uh, the most that you should reduce that would be acceptable would be 10 inches. So if you have an exact replacement in terms of width, thickness you could get by with maybe 90 inches versus 100 but that would be the absolute limit since we have exceeded more than 10% because 10% here would give us about an uh, 86 a little bit greater than 86 length so 78 is definitely too short now we have two others here now here we do have one that's a 96 inch length but the thickness is 18 thousandths of an inch well, it's thicker, but is that going to be acceptable? Well, that's what we're going to need to figure out. And then here's another one that's thicker, but not quite as thick as this one, but it's longer. So what do we do in that case? Here's some important rules that we need to follow when determining these different variations. Mainspring length is inversely proportional to the length of the spring. That means that if you double the length, you reduce the strength in half. So here we're exceeding the length here, 120 inches versus 96, which means that this longer spring, all, everything else equal, will be weaker because it is longer. And if you reduce the length in half, the strength is doubled. So if you get a mainspring that is too short, it may end up being a spring that is too strong. And a spring that is too strong can wear your life, life out of the movement a lot quicker. Next thing we need to consider is that the width of a mainspring is directly proportional to the strength. That means if you double the width, make it twice as wide, the strength of the spring will double. Now if you reduce the spring in width, then your strength will be reduced to half of the original amount, or half of the original mainspring. 
Now if you increase the, main, the thickness of the mainspring, that is directly proportional to the cube of its thickness. Now what that means that is if, if the thickness of the mainspring is doubled, the strength will increase eight times. So mathematically speaking, that would be two times two times two. That's the cube function. Now if the mainspring, for example, is 12 thousandths thick, and you replace it with a spring that is 24 thousandths thick, the new spring will be eight times stronger. If the current spring is 24 thousandths thick, and you replace it with a thinner 12 thousandths spring, the new spring will only have an eighth of the strength of the original spring. So as you can see, a variation in thickness has a tremendously greater difference to the outcome of the strength of your spring than the width or the length. So the key thing that you have to consider here is the thickness gives the greatest impact. So in looking at our original selections here, we're 16 and a half thousandths thick. To go to 18 thousandths, that could be a big difference. But here we're only going to 17 and a half thousandths, which is still quite a bit higher than, which is a full thousandths higher than 16 and a half, but we're reducing the power by the length because we're going to 120 inches versus 96. So this could be a possible good replacement, but again, this might be two. So what we'll need to do is mathematically solve to see which of these two would be the best replacement for our spring.